But when I, when I first bought the house, it was uninhabitable. Uh, and my attorney kept you know, circling back to me on the telephone saying, please turn your contract to page 42, paragraph five, section three, where I've highlighted the word uninhabitable. And I said, but that's exactly why I'm buying it. Uh, and in fact, it didn't scare me off, it motivated me. It, it, it galvanized my attention because I didn't want to buy someone else's house and take out history. I wanted to buy a house that had, had a living history, um, part of it, and then preserve it and act as its steward. And what we did was we took every board foot of lumber out, all of the sinks, all of the fixtures, you know, all of the lighting and fixtures that were here, we took out and we inventoried and we numbered and we put it all into a warehouse. Uh, and then we renovated the working components of the house, new plumbing, new electrical, air conditioning, heating, ventilating, and then put everything back. George Washington, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. I'm you. seeing a lot of references. You've referenced a lot of generals, a lot of presidents here. This is this is a great American house. It's yes. a great American uh, uh, country house. It was very important that I reference my own history and the history of this country when decorating here. Jefferson uh, and Washington both had, in, had houses which when they were po politicians and diplomats, they traveled the world. And when they traveled, they brought back with them products or representation, whether it was wine, furniture, fine art, or decorative art, they brought them back and they, they, put, they folded them into their own houses and established a unique American perspective. They created an American vision. And the narrative of this house, which goes back to 1668, so this is a 17th century house that evolved over time, reflects the direct history and the development of this country. And you've made it ravishing. And thank you, and I try to, I, you know, I want to make it ravishing, but most importantly, I want it to be welcoming. Jeffrey, can I just say, who else? This is crazy. I just want to give a shout out to your masterful approach to layering in detail. Um, 19th century chair. 19th century with Gothic revival. upholstered in red, yeah. cherry red leather with silk tufting. Yeah, silk tufting, right. Quatrefoil wallpaper. Right, which is a reference to the chair. And, yeah. But but then these are not real, these are from resin. They're in resin, and I bought them when I was traveling in Los Angeles. Okay, they're LA. Sculptural, they're, they're sculptural commodities. Love. Okay, your aunt's crazy, amazing right. map of America with all the pinpoints on it. The, the beautiful, I just love the maiden hair and the ferns. I mean, I am not a skirted table kind of a gal. You well, have converted you should me. should be a skirted table kind of well, gal. Well, it's like this. Look at this blue, and then look at your detail everywhere. And more bordering. Mm -hmm. It's from... Well, the pleats well, ple reference uh, Chatsworth, the so Duchess of Devonshire, mm -hmm. in, in the great salon you know, at Chatsworth. Um, you will see in the background an enormous skirted table. This is because the furniture itself is so sculptural and so strong that they didn't right. need more furniture. This, this is not a house where everything you see of great beauty was purchased. It's a, where I started with the, from the family history, the heirlooms and the furnishing that all of my family had collected over time that were slowly incorporated into what surrounds us, similar to the silhouettes that you see here. Uh, the paneling was added in 1935 in Colonial Revival, which would have been faux idea of what, how colonial houses worked and lived. <laughs> Pin pricking, you know, uh, lamp shade in botanical shape, reference Sister Parish, which is a women, it's a women's handicraft, summer handicraft, where women would sit on the porch and they would use ice picks or pins to outline shape. When I, when I found the woman who makes these shades, it conjured those images of summers in Maine. The lazy day craft uh, that we've lost track of. Pre-pinning before Pinterest. That's exactly. So we're in the breakfast room, and it's really where I where I start my day. You know what? You could almost come out with a wallpaper collection of Jeffrey's pushpin images on wallpaper. So this is like guest room number what? Uh, this is guest bed guest guest bedroom number five. And it's the General Sullivan. I, right. I, you know what I'm really seeing a lot of everywhere that you don't see that much anymore are these fantastic, your love for borders. Right, the borders. It, it's border or contrast tape. And what it is, it, it, it's architecture on a roll. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was used strategically through history so successfully uh, to highlight or dimension rooms that I, and they fell out of favor and it, this 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 is a house of history so it seemed like the appropriate place to indulge and bring it back note to self jeffrey 
I am not going to worry so much about having perfect little bolts and boards and frames for everything. Look at how you have push pinned just sentimental, wonderful notes and business cards from over the years right onto your wallpaper in your bathroom. Right. Couldn't love this more. But the, and this is the bedroom hall. It's the second top floor bedroom hall in, in climbing hydrangea. The climbing hydrangea is that incredible wallpaper you see in Gone with Wind. And what made you decide, I want that Gone with Wind wallpaper, or did you it's go back to appropriate? It seems that the house has a, has a great American history and almost a sort of southern antebellum sensibility. I agree. So we, we wanted to live here. <laughs> and you feel that. Oh, you feel it. You feel it. We wanted to live here. And I did too. I, and so do I. <laughs> so this is my um, playroom. It's where me and my friends hang out. Wait, look, I mean, everywhere you look, there's something fun. Yeah. And what is going on with this game station? What so, do you want to play here? I play card games. Could, will you teach me something? I promise I'm a good driver normally. Wait, I better slow it down, right? This is sort of like a bad dream. Is this relaxing? Post-depression, when this house became a hotel and a tavern and an inn, as if they weren't hauling in enough cap, they also opened up the Locust Valley gift shop and museum. So you would come from the city or you would come in for dinner and then you would go into the trinket store and then you would buy trivets and oven mitts and that's probably where I'm going to end up. <laughs> the, 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 the end of this story is, is Jeffrey Bill Huber's museum and Locust Valley trinket shop, you know, hubcaps and worms. <laughs>